The skeletal system includes all the bones of the body, plus the joints where they attach to each other. Our skeleton protects our internal organs, provides a framework or scaffolding that allows us to stand upright and move, stores minerals that our body needs to function properly, and produces blood cells. Our muscles pulling this way or that way on our bones produce movement and without the protection of our skeleton even a simple bump on the head or chest could injure vital internal organs. Pound for pound the bones of the skeletal system are stronger than steel. The skeletal system is made up of 206 different bones, which come in four basic shapes. Long bones, such as the femur. Short bones, like the wrist and ankle bones. Flat bones, such as those in the skull or scapula. And irregular bones, like the vertebrae. There are two types of bone tissue. Compact bone, which is dense, smooth and very strong, and cancellous bone, which is spongy and lightweight. Both types of bone tissue contain living cells, which help make repairs if a bone is injured or broken. A typical long bone has a main shaft called the diaphysis, composed of compact bone, and two ends called epiphyses, composed of cancellous bone. The main shaft is covered with a membrane of living cells called periosteum to which muscles and tendons attach themselves. Inside the main shaft is a cavity called the medullary cavity which contains bone marrow. Bone marrow stores fat, produces blood cells, and plays an important part in the body's immune system. The skeletal system is divided into two divisions. The axial skeleton, which consists of bones that form the longitudinal axis of the body, and the appendicular skeleton, which consists of bones that are appended to the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton includes 80 bones comprising the skull, vertebral column, and thorax. The appendicular skeleton consists of the bones of the shoulders, upper extremities, hips, and lower extremities. The bones of the upper extremities, or arms, are connected to the axial skeleton via the shoulder girdle. This consists of the scapula, or shoulder blade, and the clavicle, or collarbone. The arm itself is composed of the humerus, or upper arm, and the radius, and ulna of the forearm plus the wrist and hand which consist of 27 separate bones. Because of this large number of small bones our hands are capable of more movement than any other part of our body. The bones of the lower extremities or legs are connected to the axial skeleton via the pelvic girdle which is formed by the two hip bones. It protects the bladder, reproductive organs, lower colon, and rectum. In the male, the pubic arch of the pelvis is less than 90 degrees wide. In the female, greater than 90 degrees. This difference in width is necessary for the female pelvis to accommodate childbirth. The longest, heaviest, and strongest bone in the body is the femur, commonly called the thigh bone. At one end it is connected to the pelvis and at the other end to the lower leg which is made up of the tibia or shin bone and fibula. The tibia bears all of our body's weight. The fibula bears no weight at all. 
The patella, or kneecap, is a large bone between the femur and fibula. It protects the knee joint and tendons that form the knee. The bones of the ankle and foot must carry all of our body weight as we stand, walk, or run. And the 26 bones and 33 joints that make up our ankle and foot enable it to do just that. The entire skeletal system of an average adult weighs less than 10 kilograms. If you attempted to replace this with a steel skeleton that was just as strong, it would weigh 400 kilograms and still would not have the resilience of bone or the ability to repair itself. Harder than reinforced concrete, lighter than stainless steel, able to repair itself, bone is the near-perfect material to provide the framework for the human body.